Jimmy Aaron O'Reilly's uh, got back a Ford Transit Mark 7 here. I've done uh, DPF clean on this uh, a few weeks ago or something like that. And we fixed the cause of the DPF, which was a loose connection. Okay, so the van is back. We're inside now out of the wind. Well, the engine light was on. The engine light was on there. Obviously, I've got my diagnostics plugged in here and. Uh, what the customer complaint is, engine light keeps coming on and it's smoking a lot and stinks, the van sort of stinks when you're standing outside it. So again I'm using the launch Eurotab 3 scan tool, this is the code we have. Exhaust temperature too low for the particle filter. So if you had a look at one of my last videos, what the problem was with this was we had a similar code like this. I think um, something I, I'll have to go back and have a look on the video but there was a problem where it had a circuit issue uh, with the exhaust after treatment fuel pump and it, it wasn't plugged in properly so we done that and we cleaned the DPF but there was a major story behind this before it came to me someone you know spent uh, weeks upon weeks uh, messing around with the van they changed all sorts of different parts uh, map sensors I think EGR valve they changed the DPF they changed the glow plugs and they couldn't fix the problem um, but then I found the connection was wasn't wasn't connected properly anyway so that was a long story short now the van has come back we've got that code so I've got a very suspicion of what it is um, I've got my ramps here already and we're going to just get it up on the, on the ramp but uh, I've already plugged it in just to see what's going on so there's only two causes for this sort of problem here one is your vaporizer is not working uh, which I doubt because last time I checked it it was working um, or he's got an aftermarket DPF on and the aftermarket DPF isn't capable of reaching the right temperatures so we're just going to get it up on the ramps So under the van, have a look at the DPF there, we can tell by these bolt holes that it's aftermarket and just by the fitment there where the DPF holes goes in, it's different, it's bolt on. That's been replaced with an aftermarket there, so I'm suspicious that that's the cause. Okay so around the front of the DPF here, what I've done is disconnected the fuel line from the vaporizer just to test the vaporizer, make sure it's working. I've connected a MIDI vac to the vaporizer, and if we squeeze that, if we get pressure on here, the deep DPF vaporizer is blocked, and that's going to be causing it. But you can see there when we squeeze the trigger, the vaporizer is not blocked. So you know what that means. This DPF is not capable of reaching the right temperatures, so it's no good. I've already changed in the last few months, three or four of these. Exactly the same DPF as this, same same design. Looks like it come from the same company. Um, the last what time, the last customer did give me some feedback saying he was trying to get a refund on it, and uh, the company were sort of adamant that their DPF is not at fault but the last customer had his own original DPF in the back of the van I swapped it off for this took off this um, aftermarket put his original one back in the one that was deemed to be no good because it was blocked I cleaned his original one put it back on the van and it's been perfectly fine ever since okay so I've connected back up the vaporizer there and that's you can just tell by these DPFs you can see there the discoloration on it whereas it's just not suitable for the temperatures it reaches these get damaged very easily the insulation around it comes away um, just not the quality that it needs to be so if we get our finger onto the rear of the exhaust look at that that's absolutely knackered So anyway, back inside the van, we'll come back out of here. Let's just have a look at the data stream. 
try and straighten this up so we can see it a bit better. Um, differential pressure. I take it now the differential pressure is too low. Uh, differential pressure. We'll just go to the soot loading. Soot loading is probably going to be low because the pressure is not going to be high. I take it. I haven't checked the pressure yet, but I'm assuming if we've got this issue where we're getting soot come out, it means the pressure is not going to be high. Um, what else am I looking for? Temperature. Exhaust gas temperature 13, that one. Sub percentage is high. What's going on with this one? Yeah, we've got two millibars, like one millibar there. Let's hold it up to 3000 RPM. Sixteen millibars. Eighteen millibars. So that should be sort of at least 40, 50, 50, 40 to sixty millibars. It's nowhere, nowhere near where it should be. So let's go back for a minute. Um, special functions. I might need to go under and check that temperature sensor. Gonna reset the particle filter learned values. I'm surprised it hasn't chucked up a code for the DPF pressure too low or something like that. These Euro 5s, they're not as sensitive like that. If this was Euro 6, you'd get a P2002 code straight away. Now we're, we're gonna reset the exhaust gas temperature value. And we'll go back to the data stream and we'll get those same items up again so well, we don't need the pressure anymore but uh, temperature that one uh, soot hmm exhaust gas temperature sensor I might need to look at the at the plug on that might have an issue there as well but all of what we've looked at so far is 100% correct. The DPF is broken um, just because it's aftermarket. He just put this aftermarket DPF on um, and if, unfortunately he thinks his original unit has been binned. If he had his original unit, I could almost guarantee that if we put that back on, it would be absolutely fine. The, the, the whole thing is the DPF on this was changed for absolutely no reason. I know the old DPF could have could have been cleaned. So just checking the connection, all this connection's okay. Again, you can see the temperature sensor has been changed to an aftermarket one. So basically, that's just a quick video there now. Um, I've checked the voltages on the temperature sensors, but it's not really too much of a concern at the minute. But the this is what I see regularly when the uh, aftermarket DPF is fitted, unfortunately. So if you're considering fitting one, and or if you've got the question, I know some people want to ask the question, you know, will is an aftermarket DPF gonna work okay? In my experience, especially on these transits, no they don't. So that's it, I'll see you on the next video.